Well, I'm here. Today, we're finally in Indonesia. After many months of planning and repeated requests and comments, mainly from you lovely Indonesians, it's time. Hello and welcome to Jakarta, the capital and biggest city on this nation of over 17,000 islands, which has the world's fourth largest population at over 275 million people. I'm starting with a bang today. We're going to be riding the brand new whoosh 350 km per hour high speed service from Jakarta to Bandung. Well, I say from Jakarta, it's actually a bit of a trip to get to the starting point at Halim in the city's eastern suburbs. You need to take the Bekasi line to Halim LRT station, which is adjacent to the high speed station. This is the newest line on the Jakarta transit system and features fully automatic driverless trains. Halim is an impressive station. Having recently just been to China, you can see that it's heavily influenced by their way of doing things, which is certainly not a bad thing. In fact, they financed most of and built the whole project. As this trip was made during the pre-launch free trial stage before tickets went on general sale, not everything is fully open yet. However, there is a nice display detailing the history of Indonesian railways and a few food and drink stalls with a seating area in the entrance. Automatic ticket machines can also be found here, but these were not yet in use. Heading through to the security area, a cursory bag x-ray and personal metal detector check are carried out. There is no limits on liquids and nothing has to be removed, unlike at an airport. We are then in the departure area. This is equipped with a few displays, a whoosh merch shop and a large seating area. This free trial has been super popular with Indonesians and has been at full capacity on every service on every day it has operated. A queue has already formed well before boarding commences 30 minutes before departure. To pass through the gate line just insert your ticket and don't forget to collect it and don't lose it as you will need it to exit at the other end. Step free access is provided from street to train by lifts, there are also escalators available. I'd just like to say a massive thanks to my friend Adrian who sorted me out these tickets. You can check him out on Twitter for all things Indonesian transport related. Now we get our first glimpse of the marvel of engineering that is our ultra high speed chariot for today. It's a KCIC CR400 AF, basically a rebranded Chinese Fuxing CR400 AF, which has a design speed of 400 km per hour and a regular in-service speed of 350 km per hour. To see my review of China's more up-to-date BF version of this train, where I travelled in their top-tier private suites with lie flat beds, click the link above now. Level boarding is provided, and this is also the case with all new high-speed stations. Turning left and we enter VIP or first class. There is a small 9 seat section of this located at each end of the train in a 2 plus 1 layout. All seats on the whole train are fully reversible so you will always be facing the direction of travel or you can make a bay of 2 or 4 if you are travelling in a group. Information displays and TVs are located on the far bulkhead wall. The seats are a comfy leather number with great padding and are well shaped. There is also a winged and padded headrest. As you'd expect, legroom is excellent. There is an adjustable footrest which is carpeted on the rear, so take your shoes off if you use that side. A seat back pocket is available for storage, and there's one power socket and two USB-A ports per seat pair. A tray table can be deployed from the armrest and is quite sturdy enough for working on. The seat also reclines a good enough amount using this button.
Up above, you'll find coat hooks and a full-length blind on the windows, but no personal reading lights. Overall, a great product. Obviously not to the level of the Chinese suites, but then you don't need that for short journeys like this. Let's check out today's route from Jakarta Halim to Bandung Telagla. This is going to be a fast paced review as the trip is a very short one, so let's go! We depart precisely on time at 15.35. The route is 142 kilometers in distance and is scheduled to take us just 46 minutes of travel time. Contrast this to the legacy route which takes a minimum of 2 hours and 50 minutes, albeit this is from city centre to city centre. As I mentioned, I didn't pay for this ticket, however here are the current prices. There is a bit of confusion as to if these are currently on promotion and whether they will raise later on this year. I guess that depends on the demand. VIP or first class is 600,000 Indonesian rupiah. Business class is 450,000 and premium economy class is just 150,000. The cheapest fare is currently similar to an average fare on the original trains which take nearly four times as long. Therefore, I believe this gives good value for a brand new high speed train, especially in premium economy class. We'll check out the other classes shortly by the way. We spend the first few minutes making our way out of the Jakarta suburbs on this huge elevated viaduct. In fact, 54 kilometers or over a third of today's route is elevated and 16 kilometers is in tunnels. The remaining 72 kilometers or just over half is at ground level. Good afternoon, dear passengers. We would like to welcome you to the Woos High Speed Railways with destination at the Galwar station and we'll stop at Padalarang Station. Thank you for traveling with us and enjoy your trip. All onboard announcements are made in both Indonesian and English. Some of them have some questionable English phraseology, but I'm sure that will be sorted out when it's brought to their attention. Trash bin at the borders or train connection. Keep your environment nice and clean. Thank you for your attention. If you want ad-free early access to every video, great perks and to help me do bigger and better reviews, then become a channel member from just £1.99 per month. Just click the link above now or the join button in every video. Thank you! It doesn't take long before the onboard displays are showing we have reached these trains impressive operating speed of 350 km per hour. Only two countries in the world can achieve this in regular passenger service, the other is China which has the world's biggest high speed network. The ride quality is exceptionally smooth and if you weren't looking out the window you'd struggle to get any perspective of speed, it's one of the best I've ever been on. Here's a look at the second tier business class seats. They are comfortable and wide posh leather recliners in a 2 plus 2 configuration which are more than sufficient for this trip. All the amenities of VIP class are included too. One note, at the time of editing no onboard food or drink service has been announced for the premium classes. Hopefully something will be included to justify the price difference as opposed to just the seat upgrade. And here's the budget option for these trains, Premium Economy, which is in a 3 plus 2 layout. This is the same seating density as both China and India use on their lower tier classes, and in my opinion, it's okay for smaller people, but the actual seat width is too narrow to get comfy if someone of average size is in the adjacent seat. They are quite soft and also recline, have good legroom, tray tables and the same power sockets as the other classes. These seats make up 555 seats of the 601 on this train. There are 28 in business class and 18 in VIP first class. Two western style toilets are available in every coach. Mm. 
These were in a great condition, very clean, fully working and stocked up with soap and toilet paper. The future vision of the Indonesian government is that the high-speed network will extend to Surabaya in eastern Java with a travel time less than three hours. Currently it takes around eight and a half hours by train to cover the 725 kilometers between Indonesia's capital and second largest city of the world's fourth most populous country. Currently, one station on the line, Karawang, remains unfinished, so our first stop today is the first of the Bangdun stations, Padalarang. While this is located 15 kilometers to the northwest of Bandung city, a free feeder train is timed to connect both arriving and departing passengers from the high-speed trains into and from Bandung central station. As you can see, there's a lot of people awaiting our arrival, cameras at the ready. Something I've never realized about Indonesia is the fanaticism with trains is very prominent. There is a large railway community both off and online, many of whom I've interacted with over the last few months about my Indonesian travels. You've all been so friendly and helpful, so I thank you for this amazing hospitality. Padalarang is another impressive newly built elevated high-speed station, which is adjacent to the conventional station on the Jakarta to Bandung main line, where the feeder train to central Bandung departs from, as mentioned. It does seem a bit curious to me that they didn't build the Bandung high-speed station more centrally rather than building one on each side of the city. This will become even more apparent when you see the location of the line's terminus station. Maybe I've missed something, so let me know in the comments if you know why this is. On departure, we are treated to a beautiful display out of the window as the sun begins to set over Java, affording some beautiful train window views. I will have many more Indonesian adventures coming up over the next few months, but here's a sneak peek of what I've been up to and the videos to expect on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and be one of the first to watch them upon release. We now parallel the highway as we skirt around the southern side of Bandung on the final stretch of today's journey. The vistas are now becoming much more rural again, and you might be asking yourself, why did they build a station here? Well, another question I've been asking myself. Dear passengers, in a few minutes, we will arrive at the Galoar at the final station. Please check your belongings with you, and do not leave anything behind on the... Anyway, we arrive precisely on time at 16.21. In summary, I had a great time on board Indonesia's, Southeast Asia's and indeed the Southern Hemisphere's first high-speed railway. It certainly is a marvel of engineering and technology to cut two hours from the journey time on this existing route of just over two hours 50 minutes. You can speak English. Or have they? When you account for the connections at both ends, from city centre to city centre, it's more like two hours total travel time. Ultimately, I feel that the line must be extended to Surabaya via Yogyakarta and Solo City if, in the long run, it is to be a commercial success. It's a great start, but really they need to commit and push on with the full length of the route to really see the economic and environmental benefits that high-speed rail can bring by shrinking domestic travel times and getting people out of planes. I absolutely love the aesthetic of these trains. I think their looks show that they mean business, not to mention exuding exactly what they are, the fastest train in the world. I would also love to see how they would distinguish the premium classes in the form of onboard service rather than just having a better seat. I think these trains are great, comfortable and super fast and I really hope that this project is a success for Indonesia. Hopefully I can come back in 10 years and travel the length of Java in 3 hours. As you'll see in the last clip, this station really is in the middle of nowhere with amazing panoramic views of mountains and fields. 
There is just a small local cafe and shop bordering it outside the boundary and a minor road connection and not much else. Who is it for? Answers on a postcard or in the comment section below if you prefer. Don't forget to subscribe as I publish a new review every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.